Let's turn to this now. Judges Matter Research and Advocacy Officer Mbegazeli Benjamin joins us now for more on those stories. Mbegazeli, good to have you and thank you very much for your time. Two judges possibly facing the chop in South Africa. One retired relating to a matter that happened 16 years ago. And the other one, of course, is that of uh, uh, Justice Klopper, which has been going on for a while. Uh, are there similarities in process as far as these two matters are concerned? Yeah, uh, good evening, Taba, and good evening to the viewers at home. Yes, there are some similarities in the process because in terms of both the Judicial Service Commission Act and Section 177 of the Constitution, um, they must follow a similar process. And the process so far has been this. Number one, there was uh, an inquiry that was done uh, for both matters. Um, in both inquiries, witnesses were called and they, were, they, were, they testified orally and there was some cross-examination. Cross after the inquiry process, it then goes to the Judicial Service Commission, which will then consider the reports of, of that inquiry. It, the Judicial Service Commission did consider um, the reports in both instances, and then they recommended that there must be impeachment. There was a slight difference, though, in the case of, of Judge Nkola Mutata, in that the JSC said, although he was guilty of gross misconduct, um, he could not be impeached. They said that he uh, just had to pay a fine of a million rand, and and they, it was taken to court by the NGO Freedom Under Law, and the Supreme Court of Appeal last month said, no, the JSC could not just say a person who's found guilty of gross misconduct cannot be impeached, and that the JSC must then send its report to Parliament. And so that's where things are for both the Mutata and Hlope cases. So what are we likely going to hear on Wednesday when Parliament uh, briefs us, uh, Correctional Health Services uh, Portfolio Committee briefs us on, 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 that, on that finding, or at least the referral of those findings of misconduct? So this is uh, still the preliminary stage uh, as it relates to Parliament. So on Wednesday, the Justice Committee in Parliament, or in the National Assembly, will hear from Parliamentary Legal Services on the way forward. So they did a similar exercise in September of 2021 when they were considering the, the Klope report, and so they are doing the same now for the uh, Mudata report. So what parliamentary legal services will tell them, basically, is that parliament has a, a limited role when it comes to the impeachment of judges. Basically, what, the, what parliament has to do is to consider the report that was uh, done by the Judicial Service Commission. They must check that it complies with Section 177 of the Constitution. And if it does, then the Justice Committee must then table uh, the report in the National Assembly. So for now, on Wednesday, Parliamentary Legal Services will, will brief them for that, uh, on that. And then the next stage will then be a formal uh, hearing in Parliament where all 400 members of the National Assembly will be present and two-thirds of those members must vote to impeach the judge. All 400 members should be present. So on the matter of Justice Flopper, that process has already been done, you're saying, uh, because now we're hearing uh, legal services saying there is now no longer any legal impediment for this process uh, to, to continue. What does that then mean would be the next move? Yes, yeah, so the same, the same thing was done in terms of the briefing that was done by Parliamentary Legal Services to the Justice Committee. That was done for the Klopper case. But um, the difference here is that Justice Lopez took um, the reports of the JSC to court. And so he took it on review in court, and that was why there was this two-year delay, because the, the court processes were still ongoing. Um, it was only until early this year when uh, the appeal by Judge uh, Lopez elapsed. That's when Parliament tried then to revive the thing. And, and right now, we heard last week from the National Assembly's Programming Committee that the Klope impeachment will be revived. And so what now needs to happen is the Justice Committee needs to uh, then consider the full report by uh, the Judicial Service Commission and then table it in the National Assembly in front of the 400 members of the National Assembly. But you've got a, a, a judge that is uh, disputing, in fact, rejecting the findings of the JSC, rejecting that report in, in its entirety. So are we likely going to be hear, seeing hearings similar to the ones of a Section 194 inquiry in this process? Yeah, well, you're quite right. Judge Lopez did uh, reject 
the finding by the Judicial Service Commission, and which is precisely why he went to the High Court. And part of what he asked for in the High Court proceedings was that Parliament must reopen a, a full inquiry and must do its own inquiry. And the High Court said, no, no, no. In terms of Section 177 of the Constitution, Parliament can do no such thing. They can't open an inquiry after the JSC has already done a full inquiry with witnesses and everything. The Parliament can't reopen that process. All that Parliament needs to do is really to look at the report that was submitted by the JSC and either give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if they do give it a thumbs up, which is me, which means that the judge must be impeached, it must be two thirds of the members of the National Assembly, which is about 267 members of the 400 who must give it a thumbs down for the, a thumbs up for the judge to be impeached. So at least for the public protector, we saw an overwhelming majority of 318, I think, uh, who would have uh, supported that, that particular vote. Is it still the president's uh, uh, final, I suppose, word uh, in, in terms of the impeachment of judges? So let me let me just explain it carefully in terms of the role of the president and and because a lot of I see a lot of people are getting confused about what the the president has to do in these proceedings. When it comes to impeachment, that is impeachment of both the public protector and of judges. All the president does is to literally sign a decision that has been effectively taken by the National Assembly. So the National Assembly votes. Two-thirds of the members of the National Assembly must vote to impeach either the judge or the public protector or any other head of a Chapter 9 institution. And once that vote is done, the Speaker communicated to the President to say, we have now voted, two-thirds of our members have voted to remove this person from office. The President can't sit and decide whether or not they like the decision or they don't like the decision or they don't disagree or agree with the decision. All the President does is literally to sign off on it and communicate it to the person to say, you have been removed from office. That is all the President does. So it's not the, the President's final decision. It's not The President doesn't take any decision. It is the National Assembly that takes the decision. The President simply signs off on that decision, which is effectively an administrative process. On the Chopper matter, the potential application to the High Court on the funding matter, is that likely going to delay the process? So, yes, it, it might possibly delay it in the sense that Parliament chooses not to proceed. But as you heard from the, the package by RT, the Secretary of Parliament has been advised, and this is the legal position, is that there is no legal impediment from the Klopper impeachment from going, going ahead. Um, there is no interdict in place. There is no court judgment that says that Parliament can proceed. And in terms of the separation of powers, the Parliament has every right to proceed with the impeachment. It will literally be a decision that members of Parliament themselves decide not to proceed. But in terms of the law, everything is clear and they can proceed. Because Eddie Benjamin, as always, much appreciated. Thank you very much uh, for that explanation for us. Judges Meta, researcher and advocacy officer, Begazeli Benjamin, there uh, joining us on that uh, story.